What up, what up, Wimbush here. And the question I get a lot is how do I record my tutorials and what exactly is my workflow when doing it? So I put this video together going step by step on everything that I do whenever I go about creating a tutorial. But before I get started, I just want to preference with everything that you see inside this video is an accumulation of everything that I've learned and purchased over the past five to six years of doing YouTube tutorials. And so when I first got started, literally all I had was my cell phone that I used for my camera. I had like a cheap $35 mic that I got off at Amazon. And then I had a black curtain that laid up behind me. And I just had like a lamp that I put over to the side. So I definitely started with the bare minimum. And as I grew into doing more tutorials over the past couple of years, I definitely used the YouTube AdSense to purchase different items such as cameras, monitors, things of that nature, just to try to make my YouTube channel better. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So let's get started with the software. So the software that I use, if you look right here on my desktop on the left hand side, we have this camera hub. This is from Elgato and I'll get into hardware in a second, but I'm using Elgato 4K HDMI link that goes to USB so I can hook up my camera into my computer. And this is the software that came with it. So I'm able to look at myself on there, make sure everything is crisp, clear and not blurry because I like to record myself on my camera separate than a desktop. And then for my desktop recording, I'm using OBS as you see right here. Now, if we look at my settings down here under scenes, I have my normal scene. I have a vertical scene because you know, YouTube shorts, TikTok, Instagram, things of that nature. Um, I have ultra wide because I have an ultra wide monitor that sometimes when I record like gameplay, I like to record it at ultra wide. And then I have another vertical setting down there just because some aspect ratios might be a little bit different. So I made this full screen just so we can see it's a little bit better down here. But if I look at my audio mixer, the one thing that I noticed that was really hurting me was whenever I'm recording, sometimes you get like the dings and the dongs just from, you know, working with windows. And if you have the desktop audio turned on, it's definitely going to catch up on all that. So a tip that I often tell people is make sure if you're screen recording, use your OBS on your desktop, turn that off and you won't have to worry about any of the sound clicks that might happen by windows, just randomly make it sound, you know, and then this is my mic output. So I have a separate microphone that's hooked up to my computer through an audio box and then I have that set up separately my audio is going directly into OBS so as I'm doing a screen recording the audio is going to be aligned with it and everything's just going to be in sync and this is going to be my settings for whenever I'm inside of OBS so if I come in my OBS settings under output this is what I found works for me when I hit recording so my recording format is an mp4 the video encoder, this is the one that I use because I want it to be as large and crisp as possible. So the largest file size there, audio recording, I left it at default. And then audio tracks, like I have my microphone put on audio track one. That's why I have only that selected. If I need to record desktop audio for whatever reason, I'll put that on track number two, but most of the time that's not the case. And then I just put my recording at the largest file size there and everything just works out for me. Now inside of video, it's important that you have your base and your output at the same resolution. As I was saying before, I put them both at 16 by nine, not 21 by nine. And so this is going to give me a 4k output that I could later then go into DaVinci Resolve to edit. And then this is a personal preference. I like recording at 60 frames per second. I feel like it looks a lot smoother and a lot more realistic when you're working inside the desktop. But I know some people like to use 24 to try to look more cinematic. But for me, I'm trying to replicate the desktop experience as much as possible for the end user so i go with the higher frame rate now this is something that i actually learned over the past couple of years of doing youtube tutorials when i first started off since i am using an ultra wide monitor i recorded in ultra wide in which i didn't realize that a lot of people watch youtube via their mobile apps on their phone or their tablets and so when you record ultra wide it's going to make the screen extremely small and people are having trouble seeing the icons and everything when they're watching maybe from like their iphone or something of that nature so what i typically do before i start my tutorials is i'll come over to my system display here and then i'll come down here where we have our display resolution and I'll just record at 4K. So typically when I'm working, I'm working at 5K, 5120 by 2160. But when I'm doing tutorials, I wanna make sure that it's 16 by nine so that whoever's watching on the other end is gonna be able to see the viewport and the program more clearly. But if you're not using an ultra wide monitor, that doesn't matter. But for me, what I typically find is if you record at 16 by nine, a lot more people are gonna be able to access your tutorial. And actually YouTube is actually gonna push it a lot more rather than if you put it on ultra wide. And so when it comes to editing my tutorials, I use DaVinci Resolve because I like to record at 4K, 
60 frames per second and davinci resolve is able to handle that like a champ and also it came with my black magic camera which i'll get to here in a minute but that's what i've used to record myself using a black magic camera but you could get davinci resolve absolutely free if that's something that you're into but i found that the interface and just the workflow of davinci resolve worked a lot better for my typical workflow like i could just take my 4k clips from my camera and my desktop put them in davinci resolve and i don't have to worry about depreciating them at all like everything is just running native and i'm able to just edit not have to worry about anything so davinci resolve is definitely something that i like to use when i'm doing my edits okay so let's get into the hardware because i know some people have a question especially what kind of camera i'm using so i'm using the black magic cinema pocket 4k camera i've had it for a few years now definitely saved up with the youtube adsense so thank everybody for watching my videos throughout the year but once i was able to purchase it that's the one that i bought just because i wanted to have a cinematic camera and just have something that looked really good when i was recording myself when I used my cell phone, a lot of times I noticed that I was coming out blurry because it was hard to set up your cell phone, hit record, run to my chair, and then be able to go ahead and record it without seeing it. So with the Blackmagic camera, I'm able to hook it up to my computer, and then that's where I'm using the software to be able to see exactly what's gonna be coming through the camera because my camera is pushed up against my wall, so I'm not able to see the viewfinder back there. And in order to hook my camera up to my computer, I have the Elgato 4K, it's an HD my to usb converter so i can hook up my camera through the converter hook it into my computer and then i'm able to see everything on my desktop and another thing that i do is i have an ssd drive on my camera so this will allow me to natively record myself on an ssd drive and not have to record myself on a desktop because my desktop i want to strictly only record the software that i'm showcasing at that particular moment and so i what i'll do is i'll clap before I start my recording just to sync everything up. And then when I come into DaVinci Resolve, I'll take the SSD drive, take the footage of myself as you see right here, I'll put it in, I'll synchronize it with the desktop footage, and then I'm able to just go through and cut everything up as I need it. But I'm all about flexibility. So being able to have myself record it on an SSD drive that I can have this file separate than my desktop files, I'm able to go through and do edits and be really flexible about how I go about things. And so that's gonna handle the visuals. Now let's talk about the audio. As you can see in all my videos over the past couple of years, I've been using this short microphone. This is a professional microphone. They actually use this to record the Michael Jackson Thriller album. At least that's what it said on the box, right? So I figured if it's good enough for Michael Jackson, it's good enough for me. So I have my short mic hooked up to the audio box that I have over there on the side by my computer. It's using an XLR cable. So it's gonna be as professional as I could get it. And the audio box is then hooked up to my computer through USB, but again, I just wanted to go that extra mile because I started taking, you know, making tutorials and courses really serious. And so I wanted the best quality that I could get. But I just on my other channel did a recording with this other microphone. It's like $35. And that one actually sounded pretty good. So the technology definitely came a long way. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars like I did. You could definitely get a budget mic that sounds pretty good as well. And then for my monitor setup, so my main monitor, like I said, is this Dell 5K ultra wide monitor, which shout out to Dell for sending this out to me. It's been a dream being able to actually record in native 4K. But this is my main monitor that I use for working. And then on the side, I have this other monitor that I have vertical. So my monitor on the side, I just use that for feedback. So I'll put OBS over there. Then I also put the Elgato Camera Hub over there as well. So it's not on the main desktop and anything else that I need to have over there. I just throw that on my vertical screen, even some chat messages and things of that nature. And then I typically improv all my tutorials. Maybe I'll go through one or two times before I actually hit record, but I don't use scripts or anything of that nature. But if I'm doing a course, you know, like I had the School of Motion course, the bugraph.com course, and then most recently the Epic Games course through the website there. But what I'll do for that is I'll make an outline of what I want to talk about. And then I'll put that on my laptop over here. As you can see, I have a Puget mobile system as well. And so if I need to have an outline, I usually put my laptop over there on the side just so I have something I can reference. But typically I don't like using scripts and outlines of that nature. Like I want it to be as authentic as possible. So I 100% improv most of the tutorials that you see on my website. Now I want to go over some mistakes that I've learned over the past couple of years because I feel like this might help people out and the first one is the one that I came upon really early in some of my earlier tutorials because I would take myself and put myself in the corner there and what I came to find out and thank you guys for leaving a comments down below because this is what pointed it out but 
sometimes my headshot will be actually covering up important information on the screen. So like if I'm in After Effects and there's something going on in the lower right hand corner, my head will be blocking it. So people couldn't exactly see what was going on. So now what I do is, you know, I'll put my headshot at the beginning, maybe have myself in the lower right hand corner if I'm saying something and there's not something going on in the screen, but then I'll quickly fade myself out so that the video is up there most of the time because you never know what you might be blocking. And I said it a few times in this video, but I do work on an ultra wide monitor but I stopped recording on ultra wide. My first couple of tutorials I did do on ultra wide, but as I said, a lot of people, if they're watching on their cell phones or their tablets, they're not able to see the icons. They come up really small because it's gonna crop it at the top and the bottom, right? And so I record everything at 16 by nine and it's actually been working out really well. So another tip I could say is if you're gonna have a music bed under your tutorial or any video of that nature, make sure you have it super low. Like I usually put mine at about negative 40 decibels there. I used to have it a little bit louder and it definitely takes away from whatever the author is saying. So I always be speaking loud, but a lot of people in the comments would say like, we missed this part because maybe the song hit at the certain part and you know, you might have trouble, bass drop, whatever. And it's kind of really taking away from the experience for the end user to see what's really going on. So like, I like having an audio bit in there just in case I'm quiet for a second or two, but I have it at a really low level so that it doesn't take away from what I'm trying to show. And the last mistake that, well, if something that I felt like I did, but early on, I was trying to make like these big grand tutorials and I actually split them up in the series. Like I had this one, it was an X particles tutorial and I put a video up on social media. It went viral. Everybody's like, how did you do that? And so I made it into a three part series. And I noticed that the first video we usually get a lot of views. Second video, you can see a dip off. And then the third video is like barely anybody would watch it. And so what I would suggest moving forward is even if you have like a big long video, even if it's like an hour long, I would say just use the chapter points inside of YouTube to split your video up. Definitely don't upload your videos in the three different parts because a lot of the people might not be getting that information for whatever reason. Like they might not click the second video or the third video. They might not even know it exists. I mean, there's a variety of reasons why the drop off happens. I've seen this on other channels too. Like you'll see a video, it will pop off at once. The second video, a little bit less. And you know, it just keeps going lower and lower from there. So for me, I would suggest doing one long video and just chopping that video up into chapters in YouTube. So hopefully this helps a lot of people out there and answer some questions that you had about my workflow when doing tutorials. I know I said I was gonna do a live stream, but I'm doing a client project and they keep calling with notes. And so this was the best way that I'd be able to get the information out to you without being interrupted. But if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I see you soon. Thank you all for the support. Definitely appreciate it.